And once you know the basics of demand and supply on the graph, we can now elaborate and explain all of this working of the price mechanism through the graph of demand and supply. So all we need is we need to put both demand and supply on one graph. So we take prices on the y-axis and quantity on the x-axis. Now quantity meaning we can measure the quantity supplied as well as the quantity demanded. They are the same units on the same graph. Now, as I have been saying all along, these exact numbers on the axis, they are not important. All that is important is that when you are thinking of demand and supply of any product, always remember the demand of every product it will always be downward sloping that would reflect your law of demand whereas the supply will always be upward sloping that would reflect your law of supply now given demand and supply numerically remember we learned that there will always be a unique price at which quantity demanded will equal quantity supplied and there will be no shortage and there will be no surplus and we learned that this stable point the stable price will be the equilibrium because regardless of whether you start with the price that is lower or higher, the price will automatically always move and gravitate towards this nice point of 150 where QD is equal to QS and therefore there is no shortage and no surplus. Now graphically, the way you think about all of this is that first of all, remember that the, the, the equilibrium within this graph will occur at this unique point over here where the demand curve crosses the supply curve but don't ever say that this is the equilibrium this point of interest intersection allows us to identify the equilibrium the equilibrium itself is the price p star at this point of intersection of demand and supply and the quantity q star that is reflected by this point in this graphical space over here and the reason that this price p star is equilibrium is that at this price the horizontal distance out till the demand curve or the quantity demanded is exactly equal to the horizontal distance till the supply curve or the quantity supplied. That is at this P star, this Q star is equal to quantity demanded and it is equal to your quantity supplied and therefore the market will just stabilize at this price of P star. There will be no tendency for prices to change once they get to this P star because the consumers and producers, they are on the same page. There is no shortage. There is no surplus. So the market stabilizes at P star and Q star, the equilibrium price and the equilibrium quantity. Now, the question is that will the market automatically always get to this nice equilibrium price of P star? Well, again, numerically, we remember proof that whether you start with the price which is lower than 150 or a price which is higher than the equilibrium of 150, the prices will always automatically gravitate to the nice equilibrium price. We can show that graphically as well. And the way we do that is that, look, if price is not equal to P star, then there are only two possibilities. Either the price will be higher than P star, so let's call that PH, a price which is higher than the equilibrium price, or the price will be lower than this equilibrium of P star, so let's call that PL, or the low price. Now in either case, we can prove that look, the prices, they will automatically adjust. So let's start with this low price of PL. Numerically, remember I explained to you that if the price of any product is too low, then the consumers will rush into the market. The producers, they will be discouraged by the low prices and they will rush out of the market. Meaning, there will be too many consumers and too few producers and there will be a shortage. Now, graphically, it's very simple to show that. So, at this price of PL, and you can pick any price lower than P star. You mark out the quantity supplied as the horizontal distance till the supply curve and then you mark out the quantity demanded at this price as the horizontal distance till the demand curve. So you can already see that the quantity supplied is just much smaller than this entire quantity demanded. So this horizontal distance beyond the quantity supplied is all of your excess quantity demanded or what we have been calling the shortage that will be created if the product is too cheap. Now, given this shortage, the prices, they will automatically start to increase. And let's assume, first of all, the price increases to just P1 over here. Now, as the price increases, this is how I want you to sort of understand and think of what is going to happen. So as, as far as the producers are concerned, they are at PL, they are sitting at this point of the supply curve. 
as the price increases to P1, the quantity supplied will also increase. That is a rising price. It is going to signal a shortage and this rising price will give an incentive to these producers to produce more. So you will move along the same supply curve. Remember, the only thing that is changing is price. So supply curve stays the same. You just move along the supply curve to this new point over here. And as far as consumers are concerned, at price of PL, this was their quantity demanded. They were sitting at this point. Now, as the price increases to P1, the quantity demanded will fall and the consumers, they will move along the same demand curve to this new point over here. So this is the rationing function of price. The price has increased. It has kicked out some of the excess consumers. Now, at this new price of P1, now you can see that this quantity supplied has increased a bit as compared to this horizontal distance and the quantity demanded this horizontal distance, it has fallen as compared to what it was previously. But still, at this price, there is this gap between uh, quantity demanded and quantity supplied there is still a shortage there is still this excess quantity demanded over and above what the producers are willing to produce and sell so as long as there is a shortage the price will again increase again the producers they will be encouraged to supply more move along the supply curve whereas consumers as the price increases again more consumers will be discouraged and you will move along the same demand curve and the shortage would become even smaller and this process will continue until you automatically gravitate to this equilibrium of p star where the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied will exactly match each other you will get rid of this shortage. On the other hand, the only other possibility, remember we said, is that if the price is above this equilibrium of P star. So at this high price of PH, the simple logic that we understood was that if a product is too expensive, consumers will rush out of the market, they won't want to buy. A lot of producers will rush into the market attracted by these higher prices and therefore high chance of making a profit. So overall you will end up with a surplus too many producers but too few consumers now our graph shows us that easily so at this high price the quantity demanded is just this, this this distance till the demand curve whereas the quantity supplied is this entire distance till the supply curve so you can see that there is this excess supply that will be created which we are going to call surplus now, given the surplus, this is where we are saying the shopkeepers, they have produced too much. They are not able to sell all that they have produced. So to get rid of the excess output they have produced, they will start offering discounts. They will start lowering the prices. And let's assume the price, first of all, falls to P2. Now, as far as the consumers are concerned, previously they were sitting at this point of the demand curve. Now, as the price falls to P2, they will be encouraged to buy more and quantity demanded will increase. They will move along this demand curve to this new point over here. As far as producers are concerned, at PH, they were sitting on this part of the supply curve. Now, as the prices they start to fall, producers will be discouraged to produce. Quantity supplied will fall and producers will move along the same supply curve to this new point over here. So at this now lower price, you see the quantity demanded has increased a bit. Quantity supplied has fallen a bit as compared to what it was previously, but there is still a surplus. There is still excess supply. So the price will fall even further and it will keep on falling until you get to the same nice equilibrium price of P star where quantity demanded is equal to quantity supplied. Now this is the working of this model of demand and supply graphically. And <clears throat> You know, the easy bit that you will be using more, uh, most often is that uh, you will consider the market of any product and you will just draw a demand curve and a supply curve. And this will be the point that will tell you that, look, this is the equilibrium price and this is the equilibrium quantity. But it is always very, very handy to understand and be able to explain that, okay, why is this an equilibrium? And you do that by picking a price which is less than this equilibrium and then explain that, look, it will always create a shortage and therefore automatically the price will start increasing towards P star. Whereas if you start with the price which is higher than this equilibrium, then they, you will create a surplus. And because of that surplus, the prices will automatically start falling towards this P star. So regardless of where you start off in terms of price, you will always move towards, towards this nice equilibrium. And this is the depiction of the beauty of the free market system through the graphs of demand and supply. And that basically covers uh, the core ideas that you need to know about this model of demand and supply. How is an equilibrium of a product's price and quantity determined given a demand and given a supply? That is assuming all non-price factors are constant. 
Now what we are going to do in the remainder of the section in the next couple of videos, realizing that look, once the price and quantity of a product is determined, we all know that prices, they will change. Sometimes they will change. They are not going to stay same forever. And these prices, they change if the non-price factors, the conditions of the market change. And because of that, sometimes the demand curve will change, move to some other point. Sometimes the supply curve will change. And whenever non-price factors affecting consumers and producers change, the market conditions change, and therefore the demand and supply curves change, then this whole system will end up at some new equilibrium price and new equilibrium quantity. And our task now in the remainder of the section is to understand and to be able to show graphically how does this equilibrium price changes when the demand and supply changes. And the way we will proceed is that I will first of all in the next video give you a very theoretical uh, explanation of some of the common non-price factors that affect demand. Then I will explain some of the common non-price factors that affect supply of most of the products. And once we know what changes the demand and supply, then we will come back to this graph. And then I will explain to you that, okay, what happens to the equilibrium price and quantity if demand increases? And similarly, what would happen to price and quantity if the demand decreases? And the same thing for supply. So basically, we are now going to focus on the changes in the market equilibrium when the demand and supply of the product changes when these non-price factors, they change.